I'm Ian Wildridge. And I'm Brady Jones. The Holocaust is one of the most tragic events in the world's history. Families were ripped apart and put in cattle cars to be taken to the concentration camps. Over four million people died in these concentration camps. Even Moses Cora remembers the day she was ripped apart from her family. As soon as we arrived in Auschwitz, we stepped down from the cattle car. My mother grabbed my twin sister and me by the hand. Everything was moving very fast. Within 10 minutes after we stepped down from the cattle car, I looked around in my childish curiosity to try to figure out what the place was. When I realized that my father and two older sisters had disappeared in the crowd, I never saw them again. As we were holding on to my mother, an SS was running toward us, yelling in German, twins, twins. We did not volunteer any information. He approached us and demanded to know if we were twins. And my mother very hesitantly asked if that was good, and the SS said yes. And my mother said yes. At that moment, another SS came, pulled my mother in one direction. We were pulled in the opposite direction. We were crying. She was crying. Nobody explained anything. I remember looking back and seeing my mother's arms stretched out in despair as we were pulled away. I never got to say goodbye to her because this was the last time we saw her. All that took no longer than 30 minutes Miriam and I no longer had a family. We were all alone. We did not know what would happen to us. And all that was done to us only for one reason, that we were born Jewish. Let me tell you, we did not understand why that was a crime. Not all victims of the Holocaust were Jewish. Some of our other groups were targets of the Nazi abuse, such as the gypsies, the handicapped, and those who opposed the Nazis. Ermgard Vakano was a famous German opera singer who performed many times for Hitler. Her one mistake was publicly voicing her anti-Nazi views. I was in the concentration camp because I said never Hitler. I may be the only person of billions of people, even Swiss people, even Italians, even Americans, said hi Hitler, but not me. And I was the only one he said Good day, Mr. Hitler. If we were alone, he would have shot me immediately. But that came later. You know, he used me as a singer, as propaganda, to give me contracts in London and in Paris to sing as the best German singer, which I was. And after I done that, he put me in the concentration camp. The horrible events of the Holocaust were not restricted to the German borders. Other countries that had to experience the wrath of Hitler were Czechoslovakia, Austria, Belgium, and Poland. Lola Goldberg, along with her husband Jacob Goldberg, were victims of the Holocaust. Lola told us of her experiences that took place in Poland. The Nazis walked in in 1939, September. 
When they walked in, we still were in school, but they stopped school a day after they walked in, and they started on us very badly. They started killing, they started taking away their food, they started on everybody, all the Jews, you know, and Poland Lodge had a big Jewish population. population. They started beating us and they started working us in the streets, even picking up, and they started killing, shooting, beating, everything happened. It took them about four months. In 1940, they started closing us around. They took the people from the other side of the city and put them all in the place to close us up. We were lucky that we lived in the place where they closed the ghetto, you know. So uh, my parents, I had three sis two sisters more than me and three brothers and my parents. They closed the ghetto and started then taking out the people. First they took the very young, not the very young, but the very little kids with their mothers. Then they started building some factories for us to work there. I worked in a tailor shop. He worked in a, but he ran off, you know. He worked in a repair shop for everything. We, I was very young and very scared, but we had to do it, but otherwise we didn't get the food. That kept us going. The little food that they gave us, they kept us going. Holocaust doctors routinely use Jewish people in their experiments. Dr. Joseph Mengele, also known as the Angel of Death, was notorious for his cruel experiments on twins and various other groups of children. Many of the victims did not survive the experiments. There were two distinct types. One, they would do a lot of observation, put us in a room, maybe 10, 20 sets of twins, naked, and then they would study every part of my body, every movement I made. They would compare it to chart, and they would compare it to my twin sister. As the experiment progressed, we are going into the second experiment, where they would take us again into a huge room, maybe 20, 30 sets of twins at a time. They would tie both of my arms with rubber hose to restrict the blood flow. And then they would take a lot of blood from my left arm, on occasion enough blood, until we fainted. And the idea was they wanted to know how much blood a person can lose and still live. At the same time, they would give injections into my right arm, a minimum of five. And those were the deadly ones. Those consisted of germs and chemicals. And after one of those injections, I became very ill. In fact, I desperately tried to hide because the rumor was that anyone taken to the hospital never came back. I was injected with something that caused latent tuberculosis, because for the past seven years, I had strange infections in the early spring and summer that wouldn't go away. Last summer, I developed heart trouble, and they called it pericarditis, and the doctors couldn't figure out what caused it. After five different antibiotics, my son, who is a doctor at the Cleveland Clinic, told me, Mom, you're coming here. And at the Cleveland Clinic, the doctor said, well, what is your family history? I said, you're going to have a very easy time. It ended in 1944 in Auschwitz. Hitler wanted to eliminate all the inferior human beings from this earth and populate the world with superior races tall, healthy, blue-eyed blood. Some of the twins who had brown eyes have been injected with dyes into their eyes. 
and into, into the spine to see if they could change the color of the eyes. Thanks goodness I had blue eyes, so I did not get that experiment. So he had also, he wanted to be able to create males or females. Now I have talked to twins who live in Israel and twins who live in Australia. These were twins, 13 or 14, which was in a reproductive age. One twin, who as a brother was castrated in the effort that Mangala wanted to make them, make him into a girl. Shortly after that, he died. There are twins who were in their 20s who were used in cross blood transfusion between girls and boys in reproductive age. And they testified that Mangala was going to make them into boys. Now, if we try to kind of understand what he wanted to do, he wanted to play God. Inside the concentration camps, life was brutal. Many Jewish people were marched to the gas chambers for an immediate death, while others were forced to do hard labor. Still, others were beaten or abused by guards. I was always sick. Always from my stomach sickness, yeah. And the soup, mm -mm. they once gave me a soup and there was a, like a total piece of meat. And the German, and I asked, I looked at it and I asked, what is this? He said, maybe your sister or your brother, a piece of him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I started crying. He, I couldn't stop. And he said, he's, took me by the neck and said, you better leave here, because if not, you're gonna get killed. He said, okay, go ahead and kill me. It's, it's nothing worth living, because we didn't have any, we were tired, worked up, we were this skinny, we came out, you know. And then now, that's what it was. We had a bad, bad time, a bad, we had a murderous time. They killed, and if they find we were doing the shells for the guns, and if the shells had a scratch, and you didn't watch, they took you out and beat you that you couldn't stand up. You know, yeah, they, I got it, because I, it was at night, and I must have closed my eyes, you know, and just, and the machine was making scratches on the shelves. And we had a German woman, you know, a Nazi woman. She was an SS woman. She came and looked at me, and she said, showed me, and she said, here, look what you did. And I said, well, the machine, the, the thing is broken. She said, why didn't you tell the mechanic to fix it? I said, I called him. He was busy. She said, she closed her fist and just hit me and broke tea, three front teeth. My bleeding didn't start for days. I was so sick from it, but nothing could help. Nobody helped, nobody. That went on for, year, for a few years, couple of years. We arrived at the barrack that was filled with children from age one to age 13. We were, went to sleep on the bottom bunk bed. I couldn't sleep. I was physically and mentally completely drained, yet there was no way that I could sleep. As I was tossing and turning, I noticed something big and dark moving on the floor. I began counting one, two, three, four, five. By the time I got to five, I jumped up screaming, mice. I was always scared of mice because I was, grew up in a farm and I encountered them often there. A voice from the top bunk bed yelled at me, you stupid kids, these are not mice, they are rats and you better get used to them because they are everywhere. Miriam and I, could not even go back to the bed. So we went to the lottery. 
As I entered the place, there on the filthy floor were the scattered corpses of three children. Their bodies were naked and shriveled. And then, as a 10-year-old, I realized that that can happen to my twin sister and me also, unless I did something to prevent it. So I made a silent pledge that I will do whatever is within my power to make sure that Miriam and I shall not end up on that filthy latrine floor. The, after one year, they gave me a Gestapo man. That's very important. The only German citizen in the world who got a Gestapo man behind her day and night. He was every minute with me, also at night in my apartment, had the key from my apartment. When I ate in the restaurant, he was sitting behind me. I got a habit afterwards, which I only could lose after a few years, always to turn around. They said, why do you turn around always? I said, the Gestapo man sit always behind me, all stood behind me. That was very bad. And one time at night we were sleeping, some girls were yelling, we didn't know what. They were yelling, they said, the cats are here, they let, I said, I looked around and I said, girls, it's not cats, it's rats as big as this. They let them in. One girl missed the ear. We jumped up all and we stayed in the middle of this little barrack. I don't know how they went out. I, we don't know. A Gestapo man got fresh with me and embraced me. And I hit him very badly in the stomach. I was very strong and he got a knife out and put the knife in my side. And one got shot in front of us. She walked out, you know, the thing was underground. And she, we were wearing something, you know, the, with a pocket she was wearing. She walked out and they were searching us if we take things because they were underground people, you know, the poles, the underground poles that were fighting down the ground, you know what I mean, yeah. So they thought we taken the things oh. to the underground. They found two shells in her. She got the two shells in her back. Maybe she fell down. Yeah, it, it, she didn't know she had it. And she told them she didn't know. We were standing there yes. and they said, you better look at this. They made up, you know. She was standing there and she got shot. There was hell on earth, that was it. Before World War II, the Jewish population was over 15 million. By 1945, the Jewish population had dropped to nine million. Adolf Hitler once stated that the world will end with the complete annihilation of the Jews. But people like Eva Moses Kaur were determined not to let this happen. Would I have died? My twin sister would have been rushed to Mengele's lab, killed with a fennel injection to the heart. And they want, would have wanted to kill her as soon as I died, so there would be no difference in her body and mine except for the disease. I did not die. I spoiled the experiment. I refused to die. Could any victims of the Holocaust ever forgive Hitler and the Nazis? Eva Moses Kora gave us a surprising answer. I have forgiven everybody, including the Nazis, including Mengele. We hope we have exposed the tragic events of the Holocaust. At the time, many people thought that this horrible event could not have happened. We would like to thank our interview guests, Lola and Jacob Goldberg, Eva Moses Kor, and Erbgard Vakano for sharing their experiences. My thought was that they never could win, even if it seemed they would on the end always lose, because bad people always lose.